You're tuned into the Believe in Bengals show with Solomon Wilcox and Adam Pacman Jones. Welcome everyone to the Believe in Bingo podcast delivered by 828 Logistics. He is Adam Pacman Jones fixing his hair. And I am Solomon Wilcox. Hey, look, I'm not terribly happy today because our Cincinnati Bengals, they took another one, the third loss of the season this time. On Sunday night football at MT Bank Stadium, they lose to the Ravens 19 to 17. And Adam, all three losses have come by a field goal on the final play of the game. Yeah, yeah. I'm concerned now, Sally. You know, I said I went concerned, but where did the offense go? Hello? What, what happened last night? It's a good question. Um, and I think that's a good place to start because remember the last two games in which the Bengals won against the Jets and the Dolphins, the offense knew they had to come out and get off to a fast start in those games. And that's exactly what they did. We thought things were improving because in those games, the Bengals came out and scored on their very first possession of the game and never looked back. Right. Yeah. Uh, but in this game on Sunday night, you know, we punted on our first four possessions, three and out, basically, on each of the first four possessions before we got our first points in the game. Uh, so that, to me, was very surprising because this was a team that Joe Burrow nearly threw for 1,000 yards in, in his last two ball games against the Baltimore Ravens. And the Ravens' defense came in being as generous as somebody giving away turkeys on Thanksgiving Day. I, I just I don't know. We was Zach was all over the place with the play calling. If you at me, um, and I got to just report the facts, even though you know that's my guy. Um, I don't know. We we was all over the place. We to me, we never really got into a rhythm in really no part of the game. Um, you can question about the the fourth down call. I like the call. I don't like the play call. Um, if we take three there, hmm, is it a different game? But I don't know. We was all over the place. Uh, you could tell it was a away game. Yeah, the offense was inconsistent. Um, there's no doubt. And there was times when, you know, what I call the pivotal moments in the game where we drove down the field, 18 play drive uh, in the, in the uh, you know, in, in the uh, fourth quarter. It should be, excuse me, the third quarter is a little bit earlier in the game. And we get down there on third down. We run the Philly special. And um, that Philly special didn't work. It was a 12-yard loss. Essentially, it was a sack. Tyler Boyd was going to try to throw the ball. And he was knocked down in the backfield. Why? And, and, yeah, and then on fourth down, we tried the shovel pass. I, I would prefer, and this is every day of the week, at that point, we're down. 10 to 13. Why, why are we got, it's okay. Go for the field goal. Take the field goal. Take, we have a great kicker, just like they have a great kicker. So you got to go ahead and take those points. I just don't understand. What is up with the trickery? We're too good to be, we have to run trick plays. Like a reverse, a double reverse. And we right here on the freaking 10 yard line. Run the ball. Or throw the ball. We don't have to trick nobody. We're too good to have run trick plays. We don't need to run trick plays when we already have points. I just don't understand it. Um, I still think uh, T. Boyd should have throw, throw, uh, threw that ball out of bounds, and it would have been – I just don't understand the trick plays. But T. Boyd got to throw the ball out of bounds right there. Well, listen, I think as he was coming around, I think he did a good job just to hold on to it. Because remember, he got the ball. Next thing you know, the defender is right on top of him. And once he gets knocked down, it's a sack, plays over. I don't think he had time to even really react. Because remember, he was coming around. They flip him the ball. As soon as he got it, the defender, Marcus Peters, was right there in his face. Listen, we have a tough time running. Forget about trick plays. <laughs> we have a tough time running our <laughs> own plays, man. No, regular we let's, yeah. let's face it, we gotten off to kind of a slow start offensively. And then in a game where you get off to a slow start, you know, um, I don't know what Lyle Collins was thinking on the shovel pass, man. You could tell Zach was not happy. The head coach wasn't happy. 
And I'm not here to call out Lau because I don't know exactly what his assignment was on that play. But you and I have been there where the coach, when the coach come hunt you up on the sideline, it ain't good. Yeah, and I'm sitting here, same way you sitting there, because we know football. Same way probably Zach, like, oh, what the? What? It's, I just didn't get it. I didn't I, I, I didn't get the, the, the reverse to T-Boy. I didn't get the shovel pass. Um, And I know you say go for the three right there. I, I didn't, at the point of, I wasn't mad that he went for the, the, the touchdown instead of taking the points right there. Um, if you look back hindsight, we should have should have did exactly what you said, uh, which is take the points. Well, uh, look a little bit later in the game, the Ravens were faced with this last week against the Bills, and they were faced with it again. You take the long drive. You, you and I said this when we talked about the Ravens last week. When you spend a lot of energy, a lot of plays, a lot of time off the clock, just to drive down there, then you get down there. And you come away with nothing, you and I both know it takes something out of a football team. It robs them of their momentum. It robs you of the energy because you can't pay off all the work that you put in. And you and I both know you don't get time back. So you when you when you get those opportunities, the Bengals were one of three uh, in terms of scoring touchdowns inside the red zone. Of the three times they got down there, they only scored one touchdown and this was one of the times on fourth and two they go for the shovel pass wasn't executed right negative play uh, on that on that play there so that to me you know again this is my first thought i would go ahead and take the points in fact we would have tied them at that point the game was we were three points uh behind on the scoreboard 13 to 10 those three points at the end of the game they would not have been able to kick the field goal for the win they would have probably yeah. been kicking a field goal for the tie, if anything, right. not for the win. So last I checked, points is the one important metric in data analytics that always leads to wins. <laughs> like you, know, you don't have to guess. If I have more points than you, I'm, I win. That's how it works. It's now time, Adam, to name our performer of the week, week five, Against the Baltimore Ravens, our performer of the week was none other than Cincinnati Bengals safety, Vaughn Bell. He's putting in yes. work. Two weeks in he, a row, this guy two is weeks, in numbers. Two weeks in a row, he's flying around the ball. He's getting his hands on the ball. Um, he's playing really good. He's playing at a high level. And when you're watching the film, he's around the ball every time. No matter if the ball getting thrown deep or it's a run play, He's all the way around the ball, all, always around the ball. Sorry, he had five tackles last night. Um, he played really good. He also had an interception, interception. on uh, Lamar Jackson. Remember, we talked about this heading into the game, that part of the Bengals' defensive game plan on Lamar Jackson uh, and what Lou Anaroma wanted to do, a controlled rush, right, to keep him yep. in the pocket, not let him escape around the corners or step up and then have a 75-yard run. They controlled him in the pocket, but that means they got a forcing to throw deep from that whale. And yes. I'm going to tell you right now, man, he almost gassed us on a few of them. Yes, and, he did. But when he showed that he's not consistent. Lamar Jackson is a consistent throwing from that deep pocket, particularly deep down the field. And what do we say in the defensive back room? We intercept all tips and overthrows. And, yes, man, Von, Von Bell was sitting there uh, waiting on one overthrow, caught it perfectly. It's his third interception in the last two games. So he is our performer of the week. I just thought he he fits into Lou Anaromo's defensive scheme perfectly. And you can tell, like, he's comfortable. Um, one person that I, I, I think that practice, this is why practice plays a big part. And people think that we could just show up and play on Sunday. It don't go like that. You know, you can tell Von Bell have, have been here putting in the work. He's playing really fast at a high level. Um, and this is going to help Jesse, though, because Jesse is almost getting back into, you know what I mean, that that Jesse that we know. And it takes time because you can't just come out and ride the bike when you want. I mean, like, not in the summer and then just ride it now. But shout out to Von Bell. He's playing really good right now. Um, 
He's all the way around the ball, catching the ball, making the tackles. Big week. Yeah, I thought he did a really good job of just limiting uh, the Baltimore Ravens from hitting on big plays down the field. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals defense um, only gave up one touchdown to the Baltimore Ravens in this game, and that was early on when it looked like a busted coverage to Mark Andrews, and he was able to score easily. Other than that, you and I both know, man, Lamar Jackson can break most defenses in two. He can shred you. Uh, he had 232 all-purpose yards from scrimmage in this game. A large part of that is our secondary. We put the lid on offenses who are looking for big plays. I can't think of one time in this game where uh, Lamar Jackson and this offense was able to have big plays. He attempted to throw the ball down the field 20 yards or more down the field five times. He only completed one of those passes. One for five, that's a good ratio. And we talked about this last week, uh, how to beat Lamar Jackson. And I think Lou had a great game plan. I think as a defense, we was in position to win this game. We had the one where uh, uh, Flowers looking back instead of keeping his eyes on his man um, when he caught the easy touchdown. Then we had the one where um, uh, Lamar overthrew him, which that was the only one that could have been bad for us, I think. But I think Lou did a hell of a job of zone blitzing him, keeping your eyes on him, keeping a spot on him, and making him beat us from the pocket. And I think that if you if you want to say defensive-wise, I think we had we played a, a good enough game that we should have won this game. If you go back and look how he tortured everybody else in the first half um, <laughs> of the last three, four games that he played, Kudos to uh, uh, Lou because the game plan was great and it worked. Um, we just didn't do what we need to do on offense to get over the hump. But we right there. We right there. This hurt. This hurt though. This hurt. Solly, this hurt right here because we'd have been sitting here licking our chops, you know, getting ready to go to Eli's and say, hey, we the number one in the division. But, you know, we still got time. We still got time. We do have time. And just uh, to let you know, the Adam Pacman Jones, he's. Giving you the truth, the defense played well enough to win the game. You hold uh, any of your opponents to under 20 points, you should definitely win. You hold the opposing offense, an explosive offense like Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens, only one touchdown on the day, you should yes. win the ball game. Justin ball. Tucker, four field goals. We held them to one touchdown and four field goals, and therein lies the story. We only give up 19 points, but yet our offense can only muster 17 points. That's why we needed that field goal in the third quarter. And now it's time to talk about what I consider to be the pivotal moments in the game. We touched on it a little bit earlier, Adam. I do believe it was in the third quarter when we had the Philly special. It looked like a reverse um, to T. Boyd, but he was going to throw the ball to Joe Burrow, but he was sacked uh, in the backfield. 12-yard loss, and then we go for it on fourth down on the shuffle pass. We end up going down deep inside the red zone and coming away with no points. Um, for me, that was a really pivotal moment in the ball game. We played well. We just didn't play good enough to win. And it hurts because you're going. we're going to go back and look at this film like me and you have and be like, we should have won this game. We should have won the game. I don't understand the trickery. Sally, I just don't understand it. Like, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I want to know. And the, you know how it is. First thing, you when you look at the thing, you're like, God damn. First, let, me, let me ask you this. And I, I here is where I'm just added, adding some understanding. Nobody, and I mean nobody, expects Joe Burrow to go out on a pass. <laughs> nobody expects Joe Burrow to go out on a. So you could see that if we block it right, Marcus Peters, they must have been in man coverage, and that's the only time you're going to follow the receiver into the backfield on what looks like a reverse. So they had to be in man coverage. We should have been able to abort and get out of it. But I, I listen, I get the surprise element. You should be able to run some things down inside the red zone. And they ran. I don't want Joe. I don't want Joe catching passes. I want Joe throwing passes. Let me finish. Let me finish. You <laughs> Earlier, you said you didn't know. So, I mean, I, if you're going to run a surprise play in the red zone, 
you always do it on second down. You don't do it on third down because you have, now you have to kick the field goal. And they did it on right. second down. Field goal. And what happened on third down? Third down, they do a pass to um, Jamar Chase and they get it right down to the two, one or two yard line. So now that's when they decide to go for the shovel pass on fourth down. So I think the sequencing was, was good. I think the idea was good because Joe Burrow was wide open. Okay. Nobody expects that. So, I mean, I get it. I just would have kicked the field goal. That's all. That's all I'm saying. And, and even we could have come back. We could have come back from the second down failed to play. That wasn't the problem. It's on fourth down when we should have kicked the field goal. Even if the second down play didn't work, we still came, came away with points, Adam. That's your opinion. My opinion is I don't give a damn if he was wide open. I want him throwing the ball. I don't need no trick plays. I love Joe throwing the ball. I think Joe need to throw the ball. We don't need trick plays to win. That's just my opinion from me. Well, there is a team that won a Super Bowl running that same Philly special. So, I mean, it. I'm just saying, it worked. I would... Hey, look, if you have everybody has their preference of what they would like to see him do. I, I would have liked to see him kick a field goal on fourth down. They did it, uh, but we're not going to cry over that. Here's another pivotal thing in the game that I thought was very important. We ran the ball well, man. One week yes, ago we against Miami, we couldn't run it. And I thought Joe Mixon looked good, but more importantly, I thought the people blocking for Joe Mixon looked good. Average 5.8 yards. Per rush attempt, we entered the game as the league's worst in that category, averaging only 3.1 yards per attempt. So much improvement in the run game, Adam. I, I totally agree with that. Um, and this, we said this before this week. Um, this would be a week that we would like to see the run game get better so the guys up front can play with a little bit more confidence. Um, they played good this week. Joe ran the ball really good. Um, that's why I don't understand – certain things why we did certain things the way we did but um kudos to the guys up front man um, and you know joe didn't I mean, did, joe, did joe get sacked this week joe burrow let me see joe burrow was sacked let's see two times in the game two times i know that one, the, the one really don't count because he held that one a little long but uh the guys up front look like they're gelling together yeah. and, um starting to get things going hey look uh, T. Higgins, our guy, didn't play. I think that impacted. That was pivotal Big time. in this game because he – look, if he gets single coverage, man, he win it. And then yeah. if he if he's going to pull some of that coverage off of Jamar Chase, who was targeted 12 times at um, seven catches for 50 yards, didn't get into the end zone. Uh, we missed T. Higgins in this game. Hayden Hurst was able uh, to get into the end zone. How did you like his physicality? inside the red zone oh I, I love everything about him Sally and um you could tell he had a little chip on his shoulder going back to where he was drafted you know what I mean um he's a he's a he's a glass eater he's a football player he is fun to watch um he played with a lot of intensity and you could tell he loved the game of football really good player was once a yes. first round pick the very same year that the Ravens moved back up into the bottom of the first round in 2018 to take one Lamar Jackson. And that guy ends up getting traded and they keep a lower draft pick in the third round that same year, Mark Andrews. Um, so Hayden Hurst gets traded to Atlanta. Now we end up getting him. Um, I think he's here to stay because you can tell that Joe Burrow really looks to him when they need to make a play again. Um, the Bengals could have did better inside the red zone. I think that was also pivotal. One of three red zone opportunities that we get a touchdown and it was on a touchdown pass to one tight end, Hayden Hurst. I, I think we did a really good job at defending against Lamar Jackson. There's no doubt in my mind that Lou Romo is a rising star as a defensive coordinator in the National Football League because he did it again. If you, yes. can, if you can keep Lamar Jackson to only one trip to the end zone on the entire night, 232 yards from scrimmage for the entire night. Only one for five on all the deep balls that he threw in this game. He couldn't hit because he wasn't comfortable in that pocket. 
So we made him uncomfortable for some overthrows that really probably should have been touchdown, to be honest with you. So Lou Anaroma, once again, wonderful job at defending, I think, one of the greatest offensive weapons playing in the NFL right now. Lou, whatever you, whatever your pregame uh, resume is, man, I need some of that. Sprinkle some on me, baby, because you're doing a hell of a job. You got the guys over there playing at a high level. Um, I'm saying, like, your second half adjust, adjustments are some of the best I've ever seen, not just as far as um, watching. I'm talking about as far as I've played or played against. Um, you special, man. I ain't going to say that you're becoming a superstar. You are a superstar, Coach. So kudos to you, Coach. Um, nothing but love for me and Sally over here. Great job. Keep the game going, man. There's no doubt about it. Luana Romo putting their work. Uh, as one of the best defensive coordinators uh, in the National Football League. Keep up the great work. I uh, want to finish the show because there was just news breaking around the National Football League that Matt Rule, the head coach of the Carolina Panthers, has been fired after getting off to a one in four start. Uh, they lost on Sunday in a really bad way to the San Francisco 49ers. He gets fired. Uh, just into his fourth year on what was a seven-year contract. His record is 11-27 and 27 over three seasons. Your thoughts on Matt Rule being dismissed of his duties as the head coach of the Carolina Panthers? It's sad. You know, um, he, he didn't have a quarterback. You know, things was really messed up there. But 11-27 and 27 out of – come on, you got to get fired. Solid goddamn 11, 27? You don't want 11 games in, in four years? Yeah. You, uh -huh. That's kind of that's almost like ten and thirty, right? Right. <laughs> like, you, you've lost three times as many games as you won. You won. You the no, the numbers don't lie. Let's take the emotions. Let's use that analytics. Not yeah. good. Not good. Not that's good. Eleven and twenty-seven. Not good. Also, not good. also, you mentioned the quarterbacks. This is his fourth season. So in four seasons. Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. These are the quarterbacks. Teddy Bridgewater, Kyle Allen, Cam Newton twice, Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield. How do why would you just invite anybody in to play quarterback? And then I, I, he gives up on them really quickly. That's the other thing about it. Yeah, and he, out of those 11 games that he won, he probably won five of them with Cam. <laughs> so uh it, it's funny, man, but it's crazy how uh, the coaches don't get held to the same standards as the players. Um, I don't know if we would have got four years if we wouldn't have been up to par. You know, we don't get that long. It's all about what have you done for me lately. I know, I know, in one, I know in one way, it's totally separate. His money is fully guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> preach, preach. <laughs> The head coach's contract in this game is fully guaranteed. Players yes. aren't getting those deals. So he, so even though they fire him, now he gets to go play golf and they got to still pay him. Where, yeah. where, where can I go get that deal, Adam? Where can, <laughs> that's the deal I want. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right. Hey, Adam, it's been a great show. Um, next week, we got to get back in the W column. Of course, we'll be back. Remember, you can catch the Believe in Bingo podcast on Spectrum uh, Channel 43. You can also go to the Believe Podcast Network at Believe.com, B-L-E-A-V.com. We will be back with more coming up later in the week, previewing the Cincinnati Bengals week six matchup on the Believe in Bingo podcast delivered by 828 Logistics. Have a good one, everybody.